Welcome to Journey Through the Gate, your paranormal portal podcast, as we delve into the many questions and wonders brought on by the supernatural experience. What's on the other side of the gate? Let's find out together. Welcome to this side of the gate. And tonight we have a guest who's also a listener. And I always love those because they're familiar with the show. They know a little bit about the format and uh, past guests and things like that. So it's always interesting. However, he is a listener who is also an author. And he is also, uh, he's going to tell us about uh, many experiences he's had firsthand. So he's kind of an all-around guest. And we're very pleased to have him. His name is James Saucedo. And we're going to bring him into this side of the gate. Welcome, James. Thank you. Oh, this is great to have you on. Now, we've had all kinds of issues, technical issues on our side. We've had to re, uh, re uh, do this interview, the postpone it so many times. So tonight is the night, and I'm finally glad to have you on. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Oh, it's wonderful. Now, I could start this in so many ways, but let's just go ahead and name the books and your pages so we can get that up front. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, sure. Um, my name is James Salcedo. Um, you can actually look it up on Facebook, and um, and go, that'll take you to my, my page. And then also from there, you can find my other two Facebook pages for my author, for my, my writing, and then um, for my uh, nonfiction as far as true ghost stories, paranormal stuff. Okay. Supernatural stuff. Um, my books right now that I have out, um, there's one that is a collection of true ghost stories. It's called The Darkness Arises, Real Life Accounts of the Supernatural. Mm -hmm. And that has some of my own stories in it, uh, accounts in it of, of things that happened to me, plus a few from other people as well. And I'm hoping to put another one out of those um, within the next year or two, hopefully the latest. Um, and and how I started writing was in fiction. And um, so that's kind of what led me to make my other book that I have out right now. Uh, it's called The Red Lake Entity. And um, it's available on Amazon. And um, it, it combines science fiction um, set in the future, but um, it combines that with, with ghosts and, and strange things and, and um, really all the things that I've, I, I like and I've been into since I was a kid. <laughs> That's neat. And those are great, you know, there's always great combinations when you can get that in. So you've got, you know, a little bit about both, nonfiction and fiction. So that's great. Um, now you said since you were a kid, so why don't you start by telling us what first got you interested in, you know, paranormal, supernatural, uncanny? Was it cryptids? What, what first got your attention when you were a kid and how old were you? I was around 12 years old, and it was actually an experience. Okay. Um, that I, uh, it, and it's, it was a few that I had in this same area. Um, I I was at my aunt and uncle's house. It was named my, my cousin. And um, I, it was my first time over at their newer newer house that they just recently got. And um, I, I've told the story a couple of times on other – I've been on other podcasts here and there, mm -hmm. so this may sound somewhat familiar to a few people that have listened to things like um, Real Ghost Stories Online. Um, I've shared my stories on um, on Jim Harold's Campfire, mm -hmm. and then most recently on, on Into the Fray. So, uh -huh. And um, all three of those podcasters are my friends. <laughs> yeah. And, Tony, well, yeah, yeah Tony from Real Ghost Stories and Jim Harold. I don't know Jim Harold as well. As I know right, Tony yeah. and Shannon from Into the Fray, but you know all terrific people. All um, terrific and the people. first place I I heard I heard you was was on um, your ghost stories of mine. So yes, yes, was, we, was, I pretty much yeah. started out with Tony. You know, just calling in and giving him, um, you know, pointers and stuff because he had a lot of questions and it it was just a, a it's just a great show. You know, and I just it, love Tony and yeah. Jenny. Yeah, isn't that one? Well, and it was it was good to hear from from you as someone that. Has had experiences as well, and um, 
So, but yeah, so anyway, um, so some people may know the story a little bit, but I will tell anyway. Um, like I said, I was around 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. I'm not the best with dates and ages and all that, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> um, but so my cousin um, was a few years younger than me, and he had um, decided that we would sleep in the basement, which was nice and big, and at first I didn't think anything of it. Um, and so he had the, um, there was a couch bed down there, and they were still getting unpacked and everything, so there was stuff all over you know, the, the house and especially the basement. But um, there was this couch bed and, and, and um, there were also, there were um, clotheslines hanging from the, from the ceiling from, I guess they were like rafters, um, or at least the, the uh, wood, you know, wood, wood boards up, up near the top of the ceiling. And, um, and there were some sheets, sheets hanging from some of the clotheslines. So we kind of had our own little miniature room in, inside the basement. Um, but we could we could see around still you know in between the sheets, but um, so we were just talking and we were really excited about the new house and everything, and um, and we were looking in, into the back of the basement. Um, it didn't have a uh, a single like one switch for all the lights. It actually had individual bulbs with with um, uh, strings or, or I think it was mainly just strings, and that you pulled to turn on one light or another light. And so we only had the light on above us and the light on right near the stairs to go back upstairs to use the bathroom and stuff like that. Um, and I'm sorry, my, my, I have a cat and she's wondering what I'm doing here talking to <laughs> No, She's trying to jump on, onto the chair. Anyway, um, and so and she's, she's actually, I, I'll get to that later. But, um, so anyway, we were talking and we, we were looking into the back of the basement. Now, I haven't mentioned this here yet, but I am actually legally blind, mm -hmm. and so I can't. I have a. I'm really um, nearsighted. I can. I can see things um, closer to me. I can't. I can see things further, but it's all blurry, and I can't tell colors very well. But right. We were looking into the the back corner of the basement, which was behind the stairs. So it was like a little. Um, it was like a, a L-shaped basement, basically. And the lights are off there, and we noticed something in the back, behind, and above the the, the furthest uh, clothesline and the sheet that was hanging there. And it was basically the the um, the, the the head of an older woman, an elderly woman. And I I could see her face clearly, which I should not have been able to do that at the distance that we were at with my vision the way it was. Mm -hmm. I could see her. She had curly, kind of curly white, white hair, and she had glasses on. And she was staring at us, and she was not happy we were there. Mm. And and at the time, you know, my my cousin and I, being little kids, we were scared. And, I bet. and but at the same time, my my aunt and uncle had had three kids, and they were also a lot of times they work at night um, sometimes. So when they were home for a night, all night. You did not want to bother them um, at night unless you, you know, unless it wasn't an absolute emergency. And we were sitting there talking and trying to figure out what we were seeing. And but we were also afraid to go and try to get anybody and then come down and have whatever this was, you know, not be there anymore. Right. And then we, we'd be in a bunch of trouble for, you know, for getting everybody up. So we decided to just not look in that direction for the rest of that night. And although a couple times we did, and you know, we're still there for a while. Oh man! Uh, and uh, but like I said, I could see that the the head clearly, and it was strange because it was as if she was standing, you know, behind the sheet, except that the sheet was near the ceiling, and we looked down, and there was there were no feet on the floor. Wow. There was no, there was nothing on the ground. So she uh, just, you guys were basically had trapped yourselves due to the fear. You had to choose between fears to go up and get help and then come back and maybe nothing's there or deal with whatever was in that basement for the night. That's just terrible. Well, and it's, it's, well, it's, it's amazing. Now think about that is we didn't know anything about ghosts. I right. Mean, we didn't, we didn't think this is, this is a ghost and you know, it probably might've helped if we did know it was one or we wouldn't, would have been as, as afraid um, possibly, but we didn't know. So, but, we didn't want to move too much either, just in case. And um, so we were, we decided to just not look in that direction. 
and we just kept on talking. And that's when we noticed something else in the basement, closer to in between us and the um, the the corner where the stairs were at. And it was a it was a black cat, just kind of laying on the ground. Not not it was its paws out, but just I guess laying on on its on its stomach basically. Um, and it was just looking at us, and it, it had red, like basically red, orange, orange red eyes. Wow. And what was weird about it is, um, besides just the eyes, is I never heard any movement in the basement for it to, to, to get to where it was at. Uh-huh. Uh, I have really sensitive ears, so I can hear everything, including, like right now, now my heater just turned on, and it sounds really loud to me. Oh, know. it's the heater. I was wondering what that was. I'm like, oh gosh, is that an EVP? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that, it's a heater. heater. I was going to warn you about that. That yeah. you might hear my either my heater or my cat from time to time. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, and I, I also live in a in a one bedroom apartment, and I sleep mainly in the living room, so everything is like right here. So. Yeah, it's all right there. Yeah. So uh, basically, I, you guys spent the you know the night in the cellar with this woman staring at you and she's obviously mad that you're there or you got the feeling that she was yeah. you know upset you guys were there trying to figure out what was going on and then a cat well that's funny because we got up and at first we weren't sure if it was a real cat or not like we thought maybe it could be possibly somehow a real cat uh-huh. and so we got out of the couch bed and, and decided to go over towards it to see if maybe it got in somehow and of course, getting out of the couch, but we had to turn around. And when we looked back there, it was gone. Hmm. And, I, and again, I never heard it move. I never heard it, it was a, a cement floor for the basement. So, right. I, I'm sure I would have heard. And with all the things on the floor, I'm sure I would have heard something. Right. And uh, you heard nothing. That's amazing. Nothing. So, you guys, what did you do? Just, you know, basically after a while, just fell asleep. And then you, did you yeah, see, we, ever see I, her again or no? Well, not again. No, nope, we didn't see those again. Uh, we did. Well, we did see the cat again once we got back into the bed, which was uh-huh. not uh, not great. But we just, yeah, we um, we just talked until we fell asleep, and then in the morning, it, it was light, there was light coming in through the windows, you know, near the top of the the the, the basement ceiling, I guess, the right. first floor. You know, there, there was light coming in, and everything was okay, and and, um, and that was just really our first experience in that house. We had others too. Right. Um, Did now this was his place. house? It was hit your cousin's house, right? Yes. Yep. Now yeah. later on, I mean, you said you had other other experiences, but later on, did he ever say that he saw her again, or just was there other experiences in that house with something different? It was. We don't. We never saw her again. But I've, I've, in the last few years, I've been looking into all this, and so even though we didn't see her, um, I know that sometimes spirits can change their shapes. So right. Either we, we saw her again and she was in a different shape, or we didn't and there was other things there. So Right, true. Um, yeah, so we don't know. And, and at the time, we, you know, we were really afraid, but now I look back and I don't think that she was necessarily evil. Right, she was just she... maybe confused and didn't know. You said this was a new house, everybody yeah. was just moving in. You know, yeah. and that can stir things up an awful lot too, you know. And family, and, yeah, family and if you are sensitive, being the fact that I have found, and, you know, I don't want to be insensitive about this, but once you start losing one sense, like if we lose the sense of, you know, hearing or, you know, uh, something along those lines, it it tends to make your other senses stronger. And I'm wondering if you felt, you maybe even felt her being there before she was there. Do you feel like you might be a little sensitive or be an empathic at all or or something like that? Yeah, I think so. And what's funny about the senses that you mentioned is um, I also have no sense of smell okay. and limited sense of touch. So really the only sense that I have that works as far as the normal senses, um, you know, considered normal, um, the only one that works right or above above average is my hearing. Right. Um, but then, yeah, I do think um, I have noticed that I can usually tell when there's something around in a place where I go to. Okay. Um, and and or and when and or when it comes to those, I've, I've noticed that everything, especially, um, I think looking into all this can kind of increase that too. And I've noticed that over the last few years, um, it seems like I, I had sensed more than I did back when I was a kid. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. that's very interesting because um, 
like I said, uh, you, that's what I find. And, you know, we tend to lean on our intuition or just our sense of, you know, the, our feeling of energies around us and things like that. So I can imagine that's pretty powerful with you. Yeah, well, and I, I mean, I can, like, when I'm in a, in a room, with a crowded room, I, I, I almost, like, feel that everybody that is going by me, even though if they don't make a lot of noise, I can, I can tell when there's people moving around. Right. Uh, and I'm not talking about ghosts. I'm just talking about being in a people. room, you know, place. Sure. And uh, I can always tell that. So that well, that would sense. make a lot of sense. So, did you have? Now you said you had more experiences in this house, and this was all around your, you know, like your preteen years. This, you're like around 12, 13 yes. years old. Yeah. That's also what's kind of funny is it's also uh, right around the time that, that I started getting interested in writing too. So. Okay. Um, but yeah. So but yeah, I, I we. We saw, there's one other thing that we saw there that I, um, it, it's probably the strangest thing I've ever seen, um, personally, and, and one of the strangest things I've heard of. Um, I, we were, we decided, we didn't really sleep much in the basement anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, we, we slept in the front their, uh, room, it was kind of like a sitting room, um, they just had chairs and stuff in it, they didn't really have, they had a separate TV room. And it looked out onto the, the front of the house, or the, the, the street in front of the house. And so even when it was dark, it was never totally dark. Mm -hmm. um, but we were laying on the floor. We had blankets and stuff and pillows on, on the floor, and we were just talking. And I went over there a lot, almost every other weekend, every weekend sometimes, just whenever I, I could. Um, and so I was, I was there quite a lot. So that's how I kind of had so many experiences. Um, but we were, we were just laying there talking, and we noticed this light coming from the staircase leading up, up to the second floor. And um, it was coming down the stairs, and it, and it was getting brighter, but it didn't fill up the whole area. Just, But it was definitely there. And it came down, and we saw it was basically a, um, a white light that was as tall and as wide as like a, a person, but there were no visible arms or legs or... or facial features or any kind of a head or body really but in the middle of this light there was it looked like a cat's claw like a giant cat's claw mm. in the middle of this light and it floated into the room we were in past us past our feet basically and around my side and back behind us into the dining room and and I didn't like not knowing where it was going so I decided to kind of get up after it was out of sight and look around the corner and it floated through the dining room table and chairs Ooh. and out through back through the, the one of the back windows leading out to the backyard now the thing about that is that the um the back of the house was up a few feet it was a half a story up from the ground so it was not ground level the window was up in the air so and it just floated out into the backyard, and I lost sight of it. And um, that was really interesting because I saw it one more time again, but just myself. Mm -hmm. And um, that time, I think if there was anything that was bad in the house, I think that was it. Yeah, you because, felt something, an energy from that? Yeah, and I had my second experience was a lot more direct and personal, Okay. I guess. Um, we were upstairs another weekend, we were upstairs in my cousin's bedroom, and he had fallen asleep, and I've always been a night owl, owl. I'm, I think part of my, because of my writing, and, and then especially now because of my eyes, I'm, I'm light sensitive, and, right. and I almost wonder if I always have been a little bit, so getting to sleep at night, and then also being a writer, just, my mind is just constantly going, Okay. Um, and so I was still awake, even though I could hear my cousins sleeping, and the bedroom door was closed, and this light appeared in the middle of it, and it came forward, and it was that same that same uh, white white figure with a cat's claw in it, and it just stopped there in front of the door between me and the door, and I just lay there because I didn't know what else to do again, because this time there would there would have been no way to get it, get to get around whatever it was. Right. Uh, so I just laid there, and it was mostly dark in the room and I started seeing these these blobs of color in front of my eyes and they started mo moving a little bit and, and changing shape until there were basically arms and legs floating in front of my eyes hmm. 
and they they weren't they weren't it wasn't like a horror movie where it wasn't you know gory or bloody or anything like that it just I don't know almost no it was like almost like mannequin arms and legs but I mean they looked like they were they were real okay and this thing was just floating there and I could tell it was it it was trying to surprise me and or just be off my fear and I just closed my eyes and I just I fell asleep oh man and after that, and because I like again, because you know I was basically trapped, and so I just right. I just kind of fell asleep. You know, you hear that a lot, James. I mean, I think Tony and I talked about this too from you know Real Ghost Stories Online, and I also with Zariah Askath. I don't know if you've ever listened to the uh, Where Did the Road Go podcast, but you'd be very yeah, interested I think I've heard in that one. Zariah is fantastic. He's also a friend of mine. Isn't it funny? It's like a tight knit circle. We all kind of sort of know it, each other. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. He and I have also spoken about this, too. It just seems like so many times when people have this experience, especially in your bedroom, like bedroom visitation, whatever. Yeah. How many people have you heard in the story where it says, well, I just fell asleep? And it, oh, so, so many. So many. Yeah. And Zariah and I uh, were talking about, you know, is there some kind of maybe a hip, not really a hypnotic, but maybe hypnotic, telepathic, something or a soothing or an energy that they put on you to put you out for whatever reason. Or maybe it's just draining so much energy from you that it makes you tired to where you fall asleep. Because that just seems like such an odd thing. You know, something comes in your room, your adrenaline should be pumping. Yet, you know, people have gone from extreme fear to falling asleep. And I just find that such an odd phenomenon, you know? Yeah, I could see that. I can also see maybe even something in the person realizing okay i can't get out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i i don't want to see this anymore mm -hmm. maybe it's some in some way the body does force itself to go to sleep yeah I mean, like, like a defense mechanism maybe in some yeah, ways that's, yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah that's what i was looking for yeah yeah so, so i mean uh, that's that's so odd and also if it's showing you arms and legs i'm wondering if it wasn't trying to manifest in some way you know if it was trying to uh, manifest in a human figure maybe it wasn't even human who knows but right. you know trying to manifest what it thought was a human figure and it was having a hard time doing it i mean that's also another thing you know yeah. um in a panic kind of thing the cat's claw shape in the center is kind of weird you know that's I, odd see, I, I've, I've never heard of that no me either me and either. I've listened to a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, myself as well, and I've never heard that. But again, not seeing it, it's hard to guess. You know, it could just been, you know, that that was like a, you know, more solid energy shape, you know, oh, of yeah. some and, sort. And that, was it twinkling at all? Did it sparkle to you when it came through the door as a light, or did it? was it just like a bright light that just kept getting brighter? What, what, how did that look to you? I don't remember any sparkling. It's kind of hard now because yeah. I'm 30, so yeah, yeah. That to memorize, me to me yeah, to memorize, uh, because uh, yeah. that's that just interests interests me a lot too. Because I've seen it to where, you know, it almost is like a pinpoint of light, or more like a light orb. You know, if you want to say orb, um, yeah. and then it just get keeps getting larger and larger, like the light just comes from that one thing, it gets larger and larger, and I've seen the sparkling thing too, where it almost seems like a lot of little sparkling lights that kind of come together to make the mass, you know, it's just so, so odd. There. Yeah. Yeah, this was all there. Um, wow, that's amazing. Now, what's interesting is, as my cousin and I got older, we didn't see anything else after that there, but we would hear things mm -hmm. in the house. Um, for a long time after, for the next couple of years, we would hear, maybe on the second floor, and we would hear doors opening and closing on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And we would think, oh, someone from the family is home, or they just came and left or something. And we'd go downstairs, and we'd be hearing the doors as we're on the stairs, but then we get down there, and there, there's no more sound. And again, no, foot, no footsteps, no other sounds either. Mm -hmm. And we get down there, and the doors were all the same way as they were. So it's just um, projecting sound. Of doors yeah, we had that, and one of the creepier ones we had with, with sound uh, it was probably the last worst one as far as sound goes. We were sitting in that front room again, which that front sitting room, I'm pretty sure that was uh, right above that little part of that basement where we saw that lady. Right. 
Um, but we were sitting in, in the, the, the front room and we were sorting through some kind of uh, um, some, some kind of sports memorabilia cards for somebody in our family. And but we were just talking and we heard this tap uh, underneath the floor, uh, um, beneath the couch in back of us in, the, in this room. And this was in the middle of the day. And well, we thought, well, it could be pipes or wiring or whatever. You know, we didn't at that, that age. We knew that there's, you know, those things are there, and we didn't know how they worked, but still, right. That's what we figured. And a few minutes later, we heard another another uh, tap, and it came from just in front of the couch. So it was actually like moving, basically. And it did this a few more times until it got to just before the the middle of the room. And then the last time it did it, it was a, a, a knock, like a, a a loud bump. And wow. And it, right beneath us and we were sitting on the floor. So we actually got up and we went outside on the front porch and sat there until his dad, my uncle, his dad got home. And and then we went back in the house after that. Wow. Now, so. did you guys ever tell the parents or the, you know, adults in the house or anything like that? Did you guys ever sit around and discuss this, you know, with Not the family? Not kids, no. We, we yeah. did tell them. They actually, my um, my cousin's mom, uh, his parents uh, got divorced years later, but my my. I guess it's still my aunt. Um, she read the book that has the story in it, and she told my cousin, "You never, you never mentioned that." And I said, "Yeah, well, we didn't really know what to make of any of it. Right. First of all, which I, you know, I agree. And second of all, we were kids, you know." Right. Right. And I mean, she never saw anything or anything like that that you no, know. No, we never heard any, anything else from from the parents. Um, I I do know that one of my other cousins, which is his sister, um, was at a house down the street. And she saw a woman that looked a lot like what we saw in the basement mm. at a different time. Wow. And we, we, we didn't talk to her about that, but mm. only once, and that was it. And mm -hmm. She didn't see what get after that. Well, that's um, interesting because you and I know, I mean, hearing a lot of this, I mean, you've obviously been, you know, reading stories and been interested in this most of your life. You know that uh, it doesn't have to be the house. It could be, you know, that, oh, okay. you know, it had the you know, people in it that drew it in. It could be that whole, you know, neighborhood. It could be that one, you know, entity or ghost, you know, yeah. uh, moves yeah. from place to place and is drawn to the light of people that can see them or that's yeah. just interesting. And the cat with it, you know, um, I, you know, a lot of people say, well, did you ever do history on the house? Did anybody ever die there? I rarely... I, I I ask those questions, but I don't ask them, I think, for the same reason some other people ask them. I ask them because it may have something to do with it. However, you know, it could have been a visitation from somebody there. It could have been somebody that, you know, that your cousin knew or that you knew that, you know, you weren't familiar with, but could, you know, it's attracted to you. It could be, you know, a hundred different things. But as, yeah. um, you know, as, as you went on, just um, in out of that house were you having experiences around the same time in other places during this time in your life um not so much only at my grandparents house okay um, just a whole other set of stories okay um but the only the last thing i would say about my cousin's house is actually one of the other interesting uh, more interesting things about it to me now is i've had dreams about that house oh. since then um wow in the past 10 15 years or so uh -huh. And my the family my my family moved out of there um, before that, so they don't live there anymore. Uh -huh. uh, but I had dreams of, of being inside the house, and the furniture was all different. Wow! And, and other other dreams I had, it was there was no furniture in there at all. Huh. Um, and so yeah, I, I think I I've had I've had experiences with traveling places that some places I know, some other places I don't know, and. I've had these dreams even if I was asleep in the daytime. Mm -hmm. When I would have these dreams of the house, I'm pretty sure I went there because in the dream it was daytime. <laughs> okay, was, was, so yeah. you, you're thinking you're astral projecting? I think so because I've had other experiences from other places. And, yeah. And, yeah, that's interesting. You know, because different furniture. How cool would it be to call up and go, "Hey, I used to live there. Do you have a red couch?" You know, <laughs> you I know would, what I mean. I would investigate the place now. Yeah, but. It's, I mean, I don't know anybody there. And... Right, right. 
But so, you know what I mean? Wouldn't it be in a in a per, in a perfect world where you know there was no circumstances for doing such a yeah, thing? Yeah. Just call up and go, hey, you you by any chance? My cousin used to live there. By any chance, you do you have a red couch with you know such and uh, such? Just to see if the furniture matched up to your dream. You know what I mean? And I wondered is is I would love to know that the um, the people that the number of people and who moved in and who moved out and be able to trace it, trace it that way. I'm wondering if it was the furniture I saw the first time was from one family. Right. And then the next time that I went there, basically, it was from another family. And another time when I went there and there was nothing in there, it was because, you know, because there was, it, no there was nobody yet. moved in yet. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. And I'm like, yeah. why this house? You know, have you ever thought, James, this is just a weird question off the side, okay? But since you've been, you know, looking at this a long time and, you know, you have some insight into it. Have you ever um, thought about reincarnation? I I, I have. I, I had a, a, I'm talking about, about dreams. I had a dream um, about, I don't know, about 10, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago now, about being in a different town that I didn't, I didn't recognize. Okay. And I had just moved into this town, and I just moved into this apartment. And but what was strange, what was strange about it to me was I, none of my family was with me um, to move move in there, or even just around there. There was no one else I knew there. Mm -hmm. And I was also I was walking around this area, and I did not have my white cane. Okay. I, I did not have any problem getting around, um, which which is not the way things are from here. Right. Now. right. I have I have. I have zero depth perception when it comes to walking places. Right. So, so you're thinking down, that's I, possible that, you know, you were having a past life memory is what you're thinking. I, I think so. Okay. I, and I don't think it was way far back because, I mean, it seemed like the buildings looked like, like they would look just at least from the last century or so. Maybe, you okay. Know. Well, this is yeah. why I asked because something that's really interesting to me, I always find it so intriguing is I'm getting a lot of these stories or I'm hearing about encounters with people who are drawn to a certain place, let's just say a house, and they don't know why they're drawn to this house. They feel like they've got to move there. Um, you know, it could just be, you know, it, it could be they're not even looking to move into a home, like looking for a home. But they're drawn to this house and they don't know why. And this is the reason I brought that up. It could be a town, it could be, you know, a country, whatever. Um, but basically, uh, I'm focusing on the houses now because I'm wondering, just because, you know, you used to go visit all the time, maybe it was a happy place for you because you got to be with your cousins and it was, you know, fun, I don't know. But why would you be drawn back there astral projecting so many times to a house that really wasn't yours. You didn't live in it. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm wondering what the draw is to that home for you. I do, but I have another, I had one other dream and I have an idea about that possibly. Okay, go ahead. I had another, one other dream about the house where I was in the, in the front right front of the staircase leading up the stairs and to the right was the front sitting room. But in this dream, there was, the front sitting room was not there. It was a hallway and it was, um, I could see into it, and I was—I felt like I was drawn, being drawn towards the hallway, but I didn't want to go in there. Mm -hmm. And the hallway curved to the side, out of out of sight, and also seemed to curve down. Okay. And I didn't like that, and I got out of that gym as quickly as I could. Okay. So I don't know if there was something, if something was down there that was drawing me. Or if it was just like you said, I don't, I don't know, but I remember that one dream. I didn't like. All the other others were okay, but that one was not good. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, it's just. I mean, it's an interesting thing to ask questions about and wonder because, you know, were you? I mean, we could go in 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 multiple different ways, but. You know, like as I've mentioned my friend Zariah, and I love how he his mind thinks, and he he steps outside the box I and mean, he looks at it in multiple different ways. And I love to do that because it'll either spark an idea or a thought that you know uh, reminds you of something else or clicks with something else. So I don't mind doing it, um, yeah. and it's it's become fun, you know, to kind of toss these ideas around. But what if, you know, you were 
like say in a past life. Basically what I'm saying is you recognize the house, the house recognized you, you, you had that past memory, even if it's just in your subconscious somewhere, quite possibly if that woman's staring at you, she could have recognized your soul. Do you see what I'm mm. saying? Yeah, like yeah. maybe that's why she was drawn to come out when you were there or, or something along those lines. And I know that sounds very far fetched and just like way out there, but is it really, well, not really, because, is it really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not really, because just the whole way that I was able to see her. Right. I, I think it was strange that I was able to see her as clearly as right. someone with great vision could yeah. see her. But it's just um, some weird so idea that, that, you yeah, know, that and, you're being drawn back to this, you know. Uh, I mean, I could see if you had a childhood there. Well, I guess maybe in right. some ways you did because you went there yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. It just seems odd. It's just a feeling I got. So, but anyway, yeah, no, tell me about your, your, your next experience or anything else you want to bring up. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I could talk about my, my home that I'm in right now, actually. Okay. I've had, I, yeah. I had, um, I try to focus on things that are more than just the, like what, uh, people would say like as a typical ghost story okay. in a way. Okay. Just up bumps and bangs. Um, I've been in this apartment I live in now for almost 15, about 15 years. Okay. Um, and, and I've noticed, I don't, have you ever heard of this? I've noticed that places, um, where people move into, it seems like sometimes there's a lot of activity at first mm -hmm. and then it kind of qu quiets down over time. Mm -hmm. Gets used I've to you I've noticed maybe? that with this place. Yeah. I've yeah. noticed that with this place. Um, I still have little bumps and bangs here once in a while and I've seen, um, movement and or a shadow a couple times here and there, but you know, nothing major, nothing like um, when I first moved here, I started having, again, a lot of what, I, what I've experienced, it, it seems to come in dreams. Uh -huh. um, I had, I started, I had this dream of being in my bedroom, which I, I, I slept in that time when I first moved here. And um, there was someone in the living room and they were moving my like furniture around and, and just almost like throwing it. And they were calling out, almost shouting, um, something like, where are you? I can't find you. Where did you go? Uh -huh. And I was afraid at first because in the stream, I was like, am I awake? Is there someone that broke in kind of somehow? And then, you know, right. And so I didn't move in the dream. And then eventually I woke up and, and there was in the dream, there was light coming from the living room area. And, but in, uh, in the, when I woke up, all the lights were off as I had had them. So that was interesting. I had that a couple of times. Uh huh. Well, you know, in your dream state, it's so much easier for them to communicate as well. Because, you know, yeah. in that kind of consciousness that you're in. And I think that's something that you have, James. It seems that you're extremely conscious of your unconscious, if you know what I mean. Well, that's funny because I've always been, I've never been athletic in any way. Mm -hmm. But my mind has always been yes. just going. It's just, I think because of the writing and just because of, of physical, just the way I'm built physically, uh -huh. um, and preferences. I don't, I don't like. I'm not one of those people who likes exercise. I just never, never like that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's possible. Yeah. Um, well, your mind is very fluid and it's very vibrant and it's awake. You know, even yeah. when it's asleep, it seems to be awake. Your conscious yeah. is just, you know, full tilt boogie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen that before in um you know it might be in um just somebody who's high, like highly empathic or i think i don't i don't quite know how to put this it's more like you're in a meditative state when you're sleeping where your your sixth sense and your third eye is like wide open and it mm -hmm. might very well be in the very beginning of sleep the very end of sleep or in you know in your case i think it's in the middle as well mm -hmm. yeah you know? i can see that because if you're astral projecting and things like that without trying can you imagine yeah. if this was something you you know put into practice and exercise it i know you don't like exercise but exercising your mind would be another you know another way because the more you exercise it the, the stronger it gets and the more control you have over that you know lucid dreaming and all that Right. Well, what's funny is, I mean, I've tried, I've tried meditating. Part of the problem for me is my, my, I'm, my ears are so sensitive right? that I can't put, I can't really have like earplugs in them very easily. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I hear everything around me. So it's kind of hard to meditate right. when I'm awake. Well, I'll tell you something, sweetie. The Dalai Lama yeah. says he has a hard time meditating. If he has a hard time yeah. meditating, we all can have a hard time meditating. So, yeah, I mean, I it's just... it's a lot of people, maybe if you had just like a soft, you know, the meditation music. You got to find what's right for you. Yeah. Um, and then I also try, um, even though you have the problem with um, the sight, I believe, can like if you looked at a candle, could you see the brightness of the candle? Can you feel the warmth and all that? It's it makes a difference. If, I can feel the yeah, I can feel the warmth. I don't really like to to because you're light sensitive. Light sensitive, but also just I don't like to mess with fire so much. Oh, I can understand. Okay, okay. well maybe we could you could just try um, focusing on some you know something else that would give you some kind of uh, a sensory uh, stuff too. Like say if it was just a light bulb. You know, like okay. from a lamp, like if you had a light coming from a lamp that was not aggressive to you, but you could just kind of look towards that. And it's basically, it's called fire gazing, but in your case, it would just be light gazing. You're focusing on a pinpoint of light, nothing too bright or, you know, uh, uh, obtrusive, but it does something when you can focus there, um, and you're listening to the music at the same time. It keeps different parts of your brain occupied so you can focus in on this other stuff. Because I think you could really do some things with that. You know, huh. if you're getting your dreams, um, a lot of people t misunderstand meditation. And I'm by no means an expert on it. But I will right. tell you this. You know, some people can do it better in a tub. You know, like almost like some, you know, submersed in in water, like say up to your neck, because you just feel like you're you're almost in that. Um, what do they call that? Like a, a hyperbaric uh, chamber, you know, when you're in, yeah. like underwater, um, yeah. like in a bath, because that's why baths are so relaxing. Uh, some people do it in a shower because the water is pouring over you and you can kind of, you know, and some people even do like their grounding and stuff like that, you know, right. just imagining all the negativity coming, you know, going with the water and the water being just this great purifying yeah. white light, you know, um, a lot of different things. The mind is a powerful thing. So if you wanted to do a meditation like that, like I would recommend going through, just like go, go through YouTube videos and see, you know, you'll know in the first, you know, 30 seconds if that one's for you. You know, some of it might be a frequency, okay. you know, just a frequency sound. Some of it might be, you know, could be Native American flute music. It could be just nature sounds or rain or, uh, you know, anything like that, water, you know. And I think once you start doing that, You'll get a little bit of control of it. And then once you're asleep, since you have such great control in your dreams, you can kind of bring that into your dream as well to where you're meditating. And then you're more or less in control. And when these things happen in your dreams, you can kind of just step back and watch the whole thing. Not from your point of view, but from a third party's point of view. So where you can see yourself and that thing. And the reason I tell you that is because if you do that in a dream, you know what I'm talking about, where you, you're you yeah. in the dream and you're in your own body. You can see your hands right. the same way you would in normal life. You're, everything is right there, and you're seeing it from your point of view. But if right. you're in control and you can bring yourself out of it, you can see where you are, and you can see this other entity or whatever looking around and looking for you or moving furniture. But you're seeing them both at the same time from a different point of view, so like, say, from the ceiling right. down. Do you see what I mean? I do. Um, and it removes yeah, the fear. I, yeah. I, I, I think now it was actually what, what it was. It was a part of a, a story that ended up being given to me through dreams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because the other thing that happened when I was here um, in my living room, I fell asleep one time. And this was not a dream. It was something that happened while I was asleep. I had, a, I had my... Um, I put a, a movie on to listen to, and um, it was just a, a basically a comic book movie, just one I, I knew really well. Mm -hmm. And I was tired because I just got home from putting groceries away and everything. I had um, at the time I I, I used the uh, both of the locks on my my front door a lot for some reason, which is kind of funny because there's a window right next to it, a, a full scale like full size window or you know a full height window next to right. the door. So right, it's not. Now I kind of laugh at that. Yes. But um, 
at the time I was doing that, and so I lay down and I, as I was sleeping, I felt the bed go down beneath me, the couch bed go down beneath me, like someone sat there next to me. Wow. And I felt someone lean against my the side of my leg. Ooh. And I live alone, and right. back then I didn't, back then I didn't have a cat. Uh huh. And um, and of course you know I tell the difference between a cat and, and the back of a person. Um. And I kind of surprised me, so I kind of mumbled, who's there? Is there anyone there? And I heard this young girl's voice, maybe maybe 12 or 13, not very not very old yet. And she laughed and asked me how there could be anyone here when I double locked the door. Wow. And that got my attention. I didn't, I bet. I didn't feel evil, but it still got my attention. So I sat up, and as I sat up, the pressure lifted, and, and once my eyes opened, there was no one there. Like visually, there was no one there. I, I didn't see anything. And my apartment is so small, I can get from the, the front door to the back patio door in, in two minutes. It's that it's that size. It's just a you know, right. little one bedroom. So there's nobody no way was there and got, got out, is what you're saying. Yeah, there's no way anyone could have gotten out that wow. fast. Now, did this this was when you first were in the apartment? Yes. Yeah. And you said it and has calmed is... down since. Yes. Well, and I, I, think, I, I think I know why. Okay. Um. There was a couple more other dreams, and then then they'll kind of that make sense more. I had this the next time I had a, a dream. Um, when I heard that young girl's voice a couple times when I got home from places, I'd hear just like a, a laugh or um, just just real quick, you know, her voice a couple times real quick. And but you know there'd be no one here. Um, but I had the next dream I had it was um, I was sitting in my bedroom closet. My, in my my larger bedroom closet, and um, I it was empty, which was weird. Didn't have any of my things in it. And I looked to my my side, and there was a young girl sitting there in like a white nightgown, like an old fashioned nightgown. Okay. And she had kind of brown hair, and she turned and looked at me, and her face was it looked like she was almost like a. a she had, well, like, like she had died, and she was just starting to basically decompose. Okay. But I didn't feel evil from her. It okay. startled me, but I didn't feel evil from her. And I woke up. And um, so then I was like, okay, well, I think that must be whoever it was that was that sat down next to me on the bed and everything. Um, and so the last time I had a dream, it was on a, a weekday when I had my one of my younger half sisters over to visit. Um, just a little bit of backstory to get to this. Her 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 dad would have to drop her off in the morning, early morning, like at around five thirty in the morning. So a lot of times we would go back to sleep after she got here, and I would let her sleep in my bedroom, and I would sleep out in the living room on the couch bed. Okay. And so she was asleep, and I had this dream. Where I I got sat up and I was still in the apartment, but it was it was like everything was uh, on fire and crumbling, like the whole complex was basically falling apart and it was on fire. And I I basically said the same things that I heard whoever it was that was in the city before say before. I heard that I said the same thing basically. Where are you? I can't find you. Where did you go? Uh oh. I started moving around the apartment and I could not find my sister. Mm. And at the same time, while all this was going on, I felt like it was me, but it wasn't me. And it was my sister. I was looking at her, but it wasn't her. I was looking for. Oh. It was that girl. It's kind of a weird duality kind of thing. Right. And so, of course, I went with the bedroom, and she wasn't there in the stream. And so I ran outside, and again, everything was on fire and burning, and I could hear people off in the distance I could hear some people yelling and screaming like like they were fleeing, and others that were obviously the ones causing all the fire and just the problems and everything. Um, I could hear them kind of shouting and, and stuff too. And then I woke up halfway, and as I was laying there just processing all this, I saw again a girl in a nightgown, and she was about the same height as my sister, but I knew it wasn't her because my sister didn't have a nightgown like that. Right. And I, I wanted to sit up so bad and, and and say something and try to communicate more, but my sister was here. I did not want her to learn about all this. Right. Her not being interested or, you know, I don't even know if she was aware of it. 
So I just had to kind of let this girl walk by me until she she was out of my view, and I had to wake up and and let it go, let her let her go that that morning. So and after having all those dreams, I I kind of put all the pieces together. I think somewhere in this area there was a young girl that um, her home or wherever she was at was on fire. Mm-hmm. She went to hide from it. Mm-hmm. Or someone, and she ended up in a closet. Mm. And I think she may have passed in that closet. Right, and you think maybe she was trying to show you this within your dreams, because you know they communicate yeah. in your dreams too. Yep, and I think that was it. I think that was yep. the, the, those. All. And I think it was interesting that how she did it because I don't know if she could t- sense that I was a writer that I wrote, I focused on stories or not, but. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had all that happen, and and then as that was all happening, activity really started to calm down. Mm-hmm. And I also by then I'd started looking into all this, and I I heard that sometimes you can communicate with them um, just by thinking yes. about them. Yes. And thinking toward them, and I I was positive this girl was not not bad. Right. Um, I, I still now I look back and I, I know I was taking a chance by doing it just in case anyone else anything else was around that might have listened that was bad that might have heard but at the time I just I was just curious mm-hmm. and so I asked her name I asked her her name now I don't I don't want to share it too much because uh, um, just because it's not really as important as a story for that goes as far as that goes but the last name that she gave me is the, the, the name of one of the major streets in this town where I live. Wow. And, and um, what's funny is now and, um, there is this annual event on the street, and it's a Halloween event. Oh, <laughs> and wow. all these houses, all these, all, you know, they go all out with all their decorations and all that, and it's a huge, right. huge thing now. But, and I had that dream. And I, unfortunately, there's only one place here in town that has records of the past and it's only open like once in a while right um i and i can't read like i used to i don't read print anymore really right so i don't know if i'm ever really gonna get a lot of answers and i don't i'm not really worried about that now because right all that happened i felt that she was gone she left do you think she did like maybe she just wanted her story told you know or or wanted somebody to know she was there and understand maybe I think she realized I was I was sensitive just from everything else that mm-hmm. I mean I don't know if anything, all, everything that you go through kind of leaves I don't know energy behind or if, yeah. if, if I don't know but I can see that and because again that's another reason why I don't think it was anything bad because she you know that she never never felt that felt bad to me and after yeah. that was done I didn't get one other time where I, I thought I heard her whispering while I was sleeping and, and she said something about being buried by the church uh-huh. which. There's a few churches in the area, but uh, and I don't. And of course, further back you go, there could have been others that are not there now. I mean, right, right. Know. But after that, that was it from her. Um, wow. I, well, if you ever did here. want to get into it, you could probably call the librarian and tell them your your situation and ask them if they could come up with any kind of research on something like that. You know. Um, I mean, if you did, I mean, I could understand if you didn't want to stir it up now. You know. Yeah. Um, if she's calm and everything's fine, I mean, I would guess, I mean, it was a dream that she showed you what I call her death state. You know, if they're, if they're coming to you and they're showing you the injuries and things like that, um, usually that's their death state. But, um, you know, I don't know if she appeared all the time like that because she, she did it in a dream. She didn't do it when she was, when you were awake. She never appeared yeah, to you I, that way when you, she was awake. When you saw her and you were awake, how did she look? Yeah. Better? Yeah, no, I just, I just yeah, I, I just, I didn't even see her face when I saw her when I was okay. awake. It was just, okay. just the, her hair, basically well, her hair and her, her nightgown. That right, was it. yeah. The reason I'm asking you that is because usually if they're stuck in their death state, they always appear right. like that. Once they're okay. crossed and, visitating, and visit, visiting, they're right. better. They seem to yeah. have lost all that, the earthly burden kind of thing. If you see what I mean. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, and I yeah. think she may have just 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 be, just showed me that that one time just to indicate that yeah. she did. Just you she wanted did you to die. know her story. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing, and that's why you think things also have calmed down. Now you've seen other, you know, like shadow things and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much names. everything's down. I, yeah, no, it, it's she's definitely if she's, I don't think she comes back. And if she does, she doesn't make herself known as it's her. Right. So right. I, I don't. Yeah. Well, that's really wild. Now, is that the the book that you wrote? I know it has a girl in it. Is that is 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 that like an uh, homage to her? Is that a yes. you know? Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. It, yeah, it is. That's um, cool. Yeah. Did you give her the same name? No, I did not. Okay. Um, I did not. No, but, I, I wanted to be different. Yeah. And and also, I kind of wanted I, her name is Hope in the book. Okay. And I did that also just because of her character and how she is in the, in the book and everything. And even with all she's going through, she does, she, she's, her name fits her. She's yeah, she's always has her. hope. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Now, the book is, okay, this one is um, science fiction mixed with paranormal yes. in a way. Tell yeah. us a little bit. You know about that, so and and also where everybody get it. You said it's on Amazon. Is it Kindle and print or? Yeah, both. It's Kindle oh, and wonderful. print. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit about that, because now we've heard about you know kind of the inspiration for that, a little sure. bit anyway. So give us a little yeah. you know overview. Yeah, I'll go over that, and then um, and then I, I definitely want to share my um, my my paranormal nonfiction page too, because I want to get oh more please do going. yeah please do but um. But yeah, for for the Red Lake entity, um, it takes place on a, a world in the far future that has been basically uh, colonized and taken out, taken over by humanity at some point. Um, so it is man, it's human mankind, humankind, but it's not here. Right. Um, but so on this planet, um, see, I, I obviously I have no idea what it's like on the other side or in any other dimensions. Right. Or any of that. But when you're making a story, you have to decide on certain things. Right. Um, so in the story, on the on the other side, and like on the in the afterlife or on the other side, basically in the other dimension, where it's the same planet but just it looks different. Um, over there, whereas we have water here, all the all of um, the water that is here exists just as er energy over there. Okay. And so there there are all these pools of this and lakes of this energy. And it's basically neutral normally, and that is where um, spirits basically come and go. They 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 go they come from there when they're they're before they're born here. That's kind of the the source for everything. And then once they pass on again, pass over, eventually they can decide to go back into those those lakes or those those energy pools. Okay. And they basically lose you know basically lose who they are, but then their energy is used for more people later on um, and most of these places um, and they're they're neutral or they're positive it's it's all good energy um, but there's this one lake um, there that's it, it's basically getting more and more dark more and more evil and and it looks red instead of blue or, or just uh, like water um, and the thing is, this this energy is because it's it's negative. It's slowly eating through the ground there, and it could possibly get to the other energy sources. Ooh. And if that happens, of course, then eventually the whole planet could be all negative, wow. which would not be good for the living or the dead. Right, right. Like can it kind of contaminate and, the whole shebang. Right, and of course, you know, it would also contaminate the water. On this side, which it, it, it does, wow. Um, and so, so that's what hope is basically arrives on the side of living um, to warn people about. And so she, the first people that she appears to is a team of, of um, basically paranormal investigators, ghost hunters. Wow. And she wants she basically wants to give them their proof and go public with, okay, you know, this is real. And I have a message for all your leaders, and it's a warning, and we need to, you know, take care of this, and do something about this lake because if we don't, everybody's going to be in trouble. That's interesting. 
and that's how the story starts. And um, and then uh, leave the rest for everybody else to read. Wow, that sounds great, James. And I and I'm so glad that she, you know, inspired that for you. That's really neat, you know. And I'm sure she knows it. You know, I hope so. That's just really cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure she does. Yeah. I'm sure she does. She, I mean, she knew you locked your door twice. You must see yeah. writing, you know, and, and I often wonder, I don't know if you've ever thought of this, maybe you have, but, uh, um, uh, I was, I just wrote a book recently too. And I promise you there were certain chapters in there that I wrote that I felt like somebody else was here helping me write it. You know, right. it took on a certain, certain chapters took on a certain cadence, if you know what mm. I mean that just kind of flowed and it just like, I couldn't write it fast enough. And yeah. And I've talked with other writers. It's happened. Uh, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is another one. I mean, that woman pumps okay. out books faster than, you know, yeah, I don't know how yeah, many she I has, know. but she's said multiple times, I, I get help from spirit. I promise you they come, they want you to know certain things. And I know Barry Strom is another, you know, okay, yeah. I've heard multiple uh, different writers that say that. So I'm wondering if she just wasn't over your shoulder helping you do some of that. It could be. And, you know, I've always had this idea and it's, it's, I, I've, I, I've, I've only, I've shared it with a couple of friends, but not very many people because I think it's a lot of people would, would, you know, wonder about it. But I've, I've always had this idea, you know, how they say that there's, there's basically reality is, is um, a multiverse. There are many, uh -huh. many universes and dimensions. I wonder if people that write fiction, if they're not, maybe it's not all fiction, as yeah. in they're tapping into other dimensions yeah. and almost seeing or, or sensing what's going on there, and that's what they're writing about. Could very well be. I mean, that makes as much sense as many other things that I've heard before. I mean, who am I to say that that's not possible? I do believe, you know. Um, yeah. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to that because I have no proof against it. You know, right, exactly, I, mean? yeah. I have more proof for like, just say reincarnation. If somebody yeah. was to ask me prove that it exists, well, I have more, you know, at least more evidence from multiple people and in my own self to, to right. go for it than against it. You see, just yeah. like ghosts, you know, oh, yeah. many times people say, well, prove it. And I'm like, I'm tired. You prove me, you prove to me that they don't exist. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's just kind of yeah. where I am at this point because I'm just, you know, I'm just so interested in people's perspective on this subject, whether it be, you know, paranormal or the supernatural or, you know, cryptids, uncanny, things that can't be explained. And I've even gotten into these long discussions, especially with my son. He's mm -hmm. such, he's just so... Oh gosh, he's so intelligent, you know, and he's very into quantum physics and he's, you know, and I, I try to hang with some of that and sometimes I yeah, can't. Oh, I know. And sometimes I go, Oh my gosh, I, you lost me. But, yeah. um, you know, he's, he's extremely into astronomy and things like that. So I, you know, we get into these discussions and we, one day we were talking about cryptids and I'm thinking, you know, what constitutes a cryptid? You know, I don't mean the actual definition. I mean, Right. Is it something that we just don't know what it is yet, you know, and yeah. okay, so how far back do you want to go? And what is what is commonplace now that may have been encrypted before to other right. people like 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago? Like, can you imagine the first time somebody saw a shark, James? I mean, honestly, no. can you imagine, you no. know, the first time that pretty cryptid, pretty scary, looks like a monster yeah. to me. You know, just because yeah. we know what it is and we can dissect it now and tell you the makeup of it doesn't mean, you know, and I think a lot of times these cryptids are the same way or what you want to, you know, categorize as a cryptid, you know, and I, and I think it's funny too how a lot of times they've changed because I can remember not too long ago, I think, you know, like, let's go back 20 years or so when the, when the chupacabra was, you know, basically your goat sucker coming out of like Puerto Rico and ran in those areas. And it, yeah. it was kind of like an upright lizard looking thing with the Mohawk dew and the, the long fangs. And now it's changed into something completely different. It looks more like a dog with mange. And I'm like, well, how'd that happen? You yeah. see what I mean? Everything is relative until I guess we can put a good solid label on it that everybody kind of sort of agrees on. You know, because to me, like I said, a shark's a monster. I don't care. 
I don't care if we do know what it is, you know, and it all depends on your perspective too. I mean, I'm sure it's more of a monster if you're in the water and it's coming at you rather than, you know, on a nice safe shore and you're just seeing it swimming out and around, it can't get to you. So, you know, I kind of look at Bigfoot like that and, you know, some of these other things like, you know, dog man and it's just, it's so interesting. Um, well, and that's that's what led me to to look into all this. And my biggest thing is now my my basically thought behind everything is I don't know what all yeah. this is. Yeah, I know it's there, but I don't know what it all is. And that's what led me to to want to write about it um, and make my own Facebook page about it. Actually, I could lead into that. Okay, go ahead. Um, Tell us about the Facebook. Yeah, page. it's it's um it's called uh, the Darkness Rises: Real Life Accounts of the Supernatural by James Salcedo. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's also the name of the, of the book that goes with it um, that you can find a link to on that page. And um, I I just I wanted to start looking into everything. I I started out with just places that are supposedly haunted. And I looked at a bunch of those and did a kind of a tour a tour around the U.S. of all the 50 states, a place in each state at least, and mm-hmm. and other topics. And so all my articles and that are there. And um, so and then of course. I just, I, I do, I, the other thing I love is hearing about other people and their experiences, mm-hmm. and that's another thing I, I, you know, that's mainly why I do all this. I love to hear what people right. think about my stuff, but also I love to hear other stories. Right. Well, you um, make sure I, that you share that on, because you're a gatekeeper now. I yeah, know that yeah, you're, I can do that. Yeah, share it over there anytime. Feel free to post anything, your questions, your pictures, you know, articles, yeah. or just share your page. You yeah. know, you're more than welcome because that's what the okay. gatekeepers is all about. We all have a little bit of data that we've yeah. collected in our lifetime, you know, whether it's, you know, our own experiences or doing like you and I do and collecting other and just being so interested in all of this. And, you know, if we come together, you know, there's so many good Facebook uh, group pages that are already involved, you know, on on my gatekeepers page and right, you know yeah. we just keep having all that and i just picture everybody standing at the you know it sounds so strange but it's kind of like everybody's just hanging out at this big entrance it's like what's through the gate i don't know but if we all walk together we can say hey you know one person's going to be i've seen this before this is what happens next or this is what it did when i saw it and you yeah. know everybody's just learning from everybody else and i just it's it's so cool you know, I think well, that, um, social media is so many different things to so many people. But yes, one thing yeah. is paranormal, you know, uh, uh, you know, that we get all excited, you know, about this stuff. We all get together and, you know, I've learned so much so quickly yep, yeah. in a short amount of time because there's so many learned people that are involved in this. And it's just wonderful. I, that's why I like doing the show. That's the whole reason I'm doing the show, just to well, talk to it's, people. It's, it's, yeah, that's funny because... I started listening to podcasts, and eventually I went from there to finding the social media. And now I'm I'm looking at um, at some point in this next year, maybe all this year, maybe next year at the latest, um, doing a podcast mm-hmm. um, myself along with a, a family family member. Um, I won't say who yet, and I don't have any details yet. But That's fine. I guess this is kind of a vague announcement but yeah I would um, absolutely do it I would absolutely do it yeah. I'll tell you people don't realize the work that goes into it and I and it's right. you know it's a labor of love but yeah. you know once you get down you know your guests and I'm interested in so many different ones um and I'm really right. interested in a lot of this conspiracy too I mean last week I got to talk to Mark Shaw I don't know if you know okay. who Mark Shaw is but Mark Shaw has written like 27 different books. He was the legal wow. analyst for uh, Headline News and CNN. And, you know, it's a prosecutor. It's just it's an amazing individual. And he uh, wrote, I think, three books on uh, the Kennedy assassination, basically uh, loosely right. around that from the Poison Patriarch, from Joe Kennedy all the way through till he got to Dorothy Kilgallen and the mysterious uh, uh circumstances around her death and it's just so interesting i got to talk to that man for like three hours it was absolutely amazing you know and i wouldn't have gotten to do that i got to talk to mark nesbitt he's like 28 30 years in gettysburg you know as a guide and as author he's written oh gosh i lost count of books i think he's up to like you know 20 something now maybe 30 now i want to go there someday oh gosh, i I don't i don't know when i'll get to but i want to it's wonderful gettysburg's wonderful i just i just left there um 
yeah. I think in August. Yeah. And I mean, it's yeah. just, it's just, it, it, just the amazing amount of people you get to talk to. It's just, it blows yeah. your mind, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's so interesting. I highly recommend doing it, you know? And it's just basically well, your editing, your time, your, your organizing. Yeah. And if you're like me, I'm doing it all by myself. So you got to figure out the sound and my mixer and this and that and scheduling. But other than that, getting it out there, um, yeah. it's been fabulous experience. It really has. So I highly well, recommend I'm, I'm, it. I don't think I want to do it myself, but I, I, my, my, my future co-host is knows how to work with editing Perfect. and recording and all that. And Perfect. I mean, I can do all the writing for the site and that's no yeah. problem for me. There you go. Um, and just, so I think we it. can, I think it'll take time, but I think we can do it. Oh yeah. There's no problem. And there's so many people on there that'll help you. You know how many podcasters are on gatekeepers? I mean, yeah, gosh, I can't yeah. tell you, Shannon, oh, you know, just so many great people are on there. So yeah. you can always ask and, you know, they'll get you through. It's a great, it's a great group. It really is. So there you go. Do it. There's nothing holding you back. Um, tell us yeah. about the other book real quick before we forget about that again, a little bit more about sure. that. It's, it's, it's some of your stories and some stories you've collected. Yeah. Yeah. So um, stories from other, actually other writers that I know through Facebook. Um, yeah, so it's it's some of my stories. It's it's um, basically everything I talked about as far as my cousin's house um, mm -hmm. is in there. Um, the the story about the about uh, the, the girl that, that was here that mm -hmm. told me her stories in there. I did a whole chapter on my apartment and there's actually more in there besides just the, the that story. Okay. I have um I won't go into it but I have there's a ghost cat that, that uh, likes to come and visit once in a while. Nice. So that's in there, but um, and then I have um, one, two other, no, one other story. I, there's actually two stories basically from my cousin's house because it was the, I wrote about but the first experience for one, and then just the rest of everything else from the other. Mm -hmm. Um, but then yeah, there's a few, uh, five or six. I think there's seven. I think other stories. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's neat, and I'm looking looking to do it again. I just need to start collecting more stories, um, so I can do that. Okay. And um, I have an email. Um, email address that if anyone has an experience they'd like to share, mm -hmm. um, please do give send it. it. You know, um, and and it will be for the page and also for the group. But I I always like like to tell everybody first. You know, I like to talk about this, but I'm not ever. I don't ever want to exploit anybody or right. use anything that they don't want me to use. So um, I I I want to learn about this, and I do want to put out material for others to read so they know they're not alone. Exactly, but. But I'm at the same time, I, you know, even if you just want to want to share um, what you've been through or what you've heard or anything like that and just talk about it, mm -hmm. just let me know in the email and we'll go from there. Um, the email is um, Salcedo Paranormal. I can spell that for you. Um, it's S-A-L-S-I-D-O and then paranormal at gmail.com. Okay. And that's where all all of that uh, can go, and that's um just any kind of discussion about the you know ghosts and everything spiritual, and uh, and then um again if you have any stories you'd like to share, I mean we could even um, change your name and or just do it with, with no name. Mm -hmm. um, I mean what, just contact me, and then we can work out the details from there. That's the main perfect, thing. Perfect, perfect. A lot of times people want to tell their story. You know, some I don't think it's um. I think it's kind of changed a little bit from when I was young. I mean, I've got, you know, gosh, we're talking 50 years in this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it change uh, where people are not as hesitant to talk about things anymore. I mean, if they have a job that's got a, you know, you know, kind of sticky, like say if they're a lawyer yeah. or something like that or a business person, a lot of times they don't want the people, their coworkers to, to know yeah. about it. But that people are starting to get, or... yeah, to let it loose a little bit. And I think it has a lot to do with not just social media, but the podcasts, you know, like look yeah. at Tony, you know, Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, Tony oh, yeah. and Jenny, lots of people like to call in there and just tell their story. And sometimes they give the real name, sometimes they don't. And they just want a place to tell somebody and, and have people say, I'm not crazy. You know, I saw that too, or I saw something similar. You know, I get a lot of that too. I'm compiling a, you know, a, a huge list of listener stories. But the thing is with me is they don't call in and leave it like they do with Tony. I have to read them 
And sometimes I have to get back with those people to make sure I've got it right before I start recording it. It takes time to do that. But yeah. um, you'll notice Tony and Jenny are like about a year and a half behind on written, but the caller in, you know, you can get it in faster. It's because it exactly. takes time editing and, you yeah. know, everything else, yeah. which brings oh, yeah. me to, you know, also my book. I hope one day, you know, you'll get to listen to it. I'm going to do an audio yeah. version. So, yeah, well, you know, yeah. uh, and you inspired me to do that, too, because I hadn't thought about that. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about doing it, but once I talked to you, I said, you know, that's, that's good. I'd love to get that out just so people, some yeah. people want to listen, you know, in their car some when they're people, driving yeah. or whatever. They want to listen or I mean, yeah. like I said, I, I have so many, I know so many author friends mm -hmm. and I'd love to read all their things. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, can't yet because yeah. it's not an audio and, and it's, it's some people, they don't want, like to do that or, you know, they're busy. I, I I don't ever. I'm not saying that they all have to do that or should do that, but mm -hmm. I, I I appreciate when anybody does do it. Oh sure, you know, and you know it's just something that we don't normally think about. You know, yeah. Um, once you get the book out, it takes so much just to get it in Kindle. People don't realize it took Steve and oh. I probably six weeks to yep. reformat that because once you put it in yep. the Kindle format, it changes everything. I mean, oh, yeah. punctuation, spacing. Oh, yeah, it's okay. unbelievable. And you've got two authors writing because I would do a I would do a chapter and then I would send it to Steve and he would write his after it. It's not like we're writing it together at the same time. I tell right. my story and he comes in behind it in case it reminded him of a story or something similar or if he just had an anecdote or if he wanted to just yeah. comment and, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And it just kept changing everything. It took us weeks upon weeks doing that oh, yeah. and he's in portland i'm in new jersey so it, it's not oh, wow. like we could go over each other's house and do it you know and now Different we've got zones. it oh, oh my portland. gosh yeah four hours yeah okay. i think it's okay, four yeah. hours yeah and yeah. now we're trying to get it to the print and that's a whole right. other format now it changes to pdf oh, yeah. and everything else and then you know it gets again it changes as soon as you put it into kindle people don't realize you have to go through all that so we're trying to get oh, to the yeah. print once we get it in print, I think it would be really neat if I read mine and he read his. Yeah. You know, and yeah, we just put good. it together in the same thing. So, you know, we're we're working on that. It takes a lot to get yeah. a book out there and oh, yeah. self-publish. Yeah. yeah. So that's really yeah. cool, man. So I'm so glad that you're a gatekeeper now. And before I let you go, I've got to ask you, because I, I noticed the other day that you said you've been listening to the episodes and, you know, you pretty much got caught up. Give me just, you know, if you have a, a, a favorite episode, tell me about it, you know, from my show. And if you have a, one that you didn't like so much, tell me why. Tell me tell me a little bit as from a listener's point of view, what are you thinking about the show? Oh, well, I, I do love it. I, I, like, I like the first episode a lot just because um, you go over all the different kinds of, of well, possible kinds of uh, spirits and ghosts and activity and I loved and that episode. For someone that's not into all this yet, that's that's a good resource to have, even just on its own. Thank you. Um, that's exactly you why know. I did that. That's yeah. exactly why I did that. And I really, really researched it, and I tried to give at least, at least two, maybe three examples of the type. Like, say, if it was a residual ghost or if it was a historical replay you know there's a difference there you know or attachment oh, yeah. to something yeah. and i just found it was just so neat to look up these different things one of my favorite ones was the you know the uh, flight 401 you know with the That's, pieces from the yeah. episode. it was just neat you know and uh, the roman yeah. soldiers uh coming through oh my gosh that was yep. such a fun yeah. episode to do but that that one episode took me like two months I you believe know. it. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Maybe more yeah. on the research. So, But thank you so much. I'm so glad somebody appreciated that. <laughs> oh, yes. And then the one you recently did with, um, and I, I'm, I'm terrible with names. It's okay. With the, the most recent one you did with, with um, Paranormal Investigators, um, the one I just joined now. And I, okay, uh, Paranormal yes. Inc. Yes, Paranormal Inc. Yeah, that yeah. is with uh, Ernie and uh, Dave. And yeah. that was a really good one, again, where they – you went into you know all the topics of of how, what they do and just information that like I said if you're not into this stuff then you know yeah and I totally agree with you about how how to um, to approach and to treat any anyone or anything that's out there is to to you know be 
be kind and respectful first yes. before anything else. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And yeah. that's just the way it is. And if you'll find out on my shows, I usually have a lot of very kind people on the show. Yep. It just seems to be that's the way it is. Even people that are dealing with, you know, the very, very darkest of this episode, you know, of this uh, subject, this genre, um, they're just the most kindest you know just giving heartfelt people um it's amazing and it's just one after the other after the other after the other and it's just it's been a wonderful experience i think we're up to episode 39 now so that's you know and being yeah. able to talk to people that have been in this um uh, richard senate i mean i can right. remember watching him on sightings when i was you know my kids were young you know and right. and other yeah. people that you know i'm getting on later that i have booked that i'm just amazed i was a kid when i was watching them and they're still out there to to get somebody that has been in this uh, this uh involved in this subject whether it's you know whatever happened to parapsychology remember that yeah. you know people that were doing that you know back in the 60s you know, what have they learned along the way, you know, and, and yeah. isn't it wonderful to pick their brains and ask them questions. So it's just, it's just absolutely fascinating. And I hope you get into it. I hope you get a po your, your podcast. I can't wait to read the book. Um, and again, that's on Kindle and Am Amazon. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Both, and, both books are actually yeah. are there. So terrific yeah. and don't be a stranger come on that gatekeeper put your stuff up there and yeah. just you know get involved talk to everybody i think it's it's i'm so glad to have met you james and i'm so glad you, you came on tonight yeah. hon. yep thank you for having me and i look forward to doing this again so like okay. i said i have uh i have stories about a, a haunted um training center for the blind that i went to oh wow um, okay and 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 also my grandparents house which um that involves um, sightings, but also um, more astral projection uh, visits there as well wow. over the years. So. Okay, well, we're definitely going to get you back. We'll definitely do it again. And try that, like I said, with that meditation, because anytime that we can maybe, you know, it, it's such a wild thing, you know, it's usually things happen to us. And if we can get any kind of control of that, and I really, really believe from my heart that you're a very strong empath. And I believe your intuition, you know, is very strong as well, as well as you have this uncanny ability. I think the astral projecting and maybe the lucid dreaming, you know, just you can you can get a, a, a better control of that just through meditation and just, you know, thinking it's so if you know what I mean. You know, so right. uh, yeah. there's a wonderful episode. I don't know if you listen to Tammy's. That's I think it's number two. Um, episode number two, and it, it talks a lot about different psychic development, um, little tricks and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I know I heard it, but I have to yeah. go back and listen to go it again. Go back and listen to it again, them. and there's so many people, like I said, on Gatekeepers too, so you can put that out there and say, hey, what are some of the ways you guys meditate or get control of things? Because I do have right. a lot of people on there too that do a lot of the lucid dreaming and astral projection. I don't do that because I have enough right. trouble you know, just dealing with it now. I don't oh, want to sure. add anything. Well, but there's I'm, some I'm wonderful people there. I don't there. deal with it every day, just once in right. a while. And that's enough for me. Yeah, I understand completely. All right. You have a wonderful evening. Thanks for coming through the gate tonight, James. And I hope to get you back on again. Anytime. Excellent. Thank you so much, love. Thank you. Thank you so much to James for coming on and sharing that. Don't forget, uh, check out his Facebook page and both his books that are on Kindle now. And uh, we appreciate him for coming on and sharing those stories with us. And hope you'll keep listening and keep sharing the podcast and keep supporting the podcast. We really appreciate you, James. Thank you so much. Now, if you have your own stories, you'd like to send them to James. He gave you his email. Here's ours. Journey through the gate at gmail.com. You can send your stories in and we'll share them on the air in our listener um, composite listener episodes. And uh, I've still got some great ones that are coming out. I am recording those and um, just getting a nice tight episode going. Uh, it takes a little while to read through those and get them recorded, um, you know, that does the story justice. So I, pr I appreciate y'all having patience on that. Again, our Facebook page is Journey Through the Gate Paranormal Portal Podcast. 
gatekeepers, come on in and join. I'd like to welcome all the new members. We are up to 189. Um, you know, you're welcome to share your stories there, your pictures. You've got questions. There's always people on there that, um, you know, uh, have their... We always say here that there are no experts, but there are people who have an expertise in certain subjects, uh, parts of this subject. So that, you know, you might have somebody who knows a little bit more about, you know, orbs or somebody who knows a little bit more about, you know, your particular question and they jump right in there. It's just a wonderful place um, or just to share you know, a story, uh, you know, or, or a video that you saw and you want to kn know a little bit more about it or just to share it, that's a great place for that. So there's that. Also, don't forget, Steve Stockton and I have our book. It is called We Are All Children in the Wilderness of the Afterlife, A Guided Tour Through a Haunted Life. And it's uh, on Kindle now. It is in ebook book form. We are still working on the printed form we're almost there we're almost there every time we get that darn thing adjusted it changes again but we're trying so uh we'll get you the the printed uh copies of that available out there soon um it's really neat i mean it's it, it basically goes through my life it's a journey through my life and my experiences um i try to give them in chronological order but in some cases you know, I bring in another uh, experience that may have happened that was similar, and we talk talk about that. And I really do my very best to offer every bit of information I can, right down to you know how the animals reacted uh, when something happened, or you know, was it you know, was, did I hear anything when I saw you know a light or when something was happening? just so you can match your experiences up with these. Um, it's hard to go back and remember something exactly as it happened. And you try really hard not to put your own ideas in it and change it and, you know, have other people's questions. You ever heard when somebody's being interviewed or especially, uh, you know, in a, <laughs> in a courtroom situation or whatever, and they say leading the witness, you try not to lead the reader and you try not to lead yourself too when you have a memory. Um, and that's why when I tell these stories, it, it almost sounds like I'm telling it exactly the same because I, I, I almost am because I try not to add anything. I try not to detract anything because I'll tell you, there's a story in there. It's called the snot hag and it's one of the scariest things that ever happened to me. And also during that uh, experience, there was a few things I realized that changed everything for me. And I've told that story, gosh, I don't know how many times now. And I started wondering, okay, you know, for an interview or podcast, should I just cut to, you know, from this point to this point, you know, just give the meat of it. And I, I got my answer the other night. I was I did a a podcast with Steve um with Adam Zane on Conspiracy Normal and he asked me to tell the story and I told it. And I told it from where it started for me to where it ended. And I thought to myself like I just said, maybe I should just, you know, for a podcast, maybe I should just start here and end here rather than tell the beginning. Just give the middle. And during that conversation and that story, because we had one, two, three, maybe five people um, on mic, a couple of people brought up some thoughts that I never thought before, that had never been asked before, never been brought up. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? I don't know. That's a good question. And if I had broken that story up, that important piece would have been taken out. So when you tell a story of an experience that happened to you, I guess my point is basically, you don't know where the important parts are. So you got to tell it, you know, as best to your recollection, but think about it. 
what was going on over here? Were there sounds? Did you see a light? Did it fade out? Did it twinkle out? Did it pop out? Different things like that. Those things might very well be important to the story. And until you meet somebody else that looks at it through their view, sometimes they can ask a question that flips the whole thing for you and makes you look at it a whole different way. And that's what's cool about telling these stories within groups that have gathered their data and their information in so many different ways. So go ahead and tell that story and go ahead and leave everything in, you know, because you might leave out an important part. And I learned that the other day and I'm glad I told it like that. And I'm glad I always tell it that way. And, uh, that's why we do that in the book. Um, because it might be something in there that makes somebody else think, when they had that experience, yes, that's what happened. That's exactly how it happened with me. And it gives you a little bit of that, I'm not as crazy as I thought I was, or it gives you that validation, or it just gives you that, oh, man, I'm not alone. And that's a nice place to be when you're going through some, some of the crazy things that happened to experiencers out there. So there's that. So again, thanks, thanks to James. Um, we are basically just going full tilt on this podcast. I'm going to keep going. I've got some fantastic stuff coming up for you for Christmas, um, and the holidays. Um, I'm trying to lean for my listeners a little bit on how to deal with, um, you know, just give you guys some more hope, you know, um, the main thing to this podcast is what's on the other side of the gate. Let's find out together. And along with all the other things that I've stated about why I do this podcast and could talk to great people and hear great stories and the like-minded and everything. My number one thing is hope and, uh, to reach out to people who, uh, maybe, you know, missing a loved one, um, whether it be a pet or family member or friend or, um, it's holidays are hard. Um, when you get around that, I've experienced that myself for many, many years. And I thought I'm going to get some people on here that are going to put, um, you know, a little bit of more love back in the whole thing and let you know that, you know, you're not the only one out there. Uh, that's missing somebody. And if we can get as many people that can come in here and, you know, give their perspective on how are our loved ones doing? Will we see them again? You know, what are some of the signs? Um, do you believe in angels? Maybe you don't believe in angels. Do you believe in spirit guides? Maybe you don't. Um, you know, do you believe that pets cross over and they're just fine? Well, I'll tell you some I do. And, uh, so we're going to try to do a little bit of that through the holidays. I've got some great guests coming on. Um, I have some guests that are going to talk a little bit about, um, having some, uh, great, uh, saints and, uh, channeling with, with, um, some people like that. Um, and I just find that so fascinating and, you know, some people get turned off by that because they right away they think it's religion. But I assure you, you know, they might be religious characters. But I'll tell you something. They're the most non-religious people <laughs> I've ever had the pleasure of listening to because they're just not about religion. They're about love and, you know, being cool and taking care of each other and being cool to yourself and forgiving yourself and trying to forgive others and letting all that, you know, the low energy stuff go and just, you know, enjoying life and living for the, for the minute, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow's promise to no one. So, um, I really love having that kind of thing on too, because it just gives you hope, you know, it just really does. I mean, why not? And what if, right? So there's that. I'm also going to try to get Artie back on to talk a little bit about uh, angels and your energy in your day and how to uh, to go about things and, again, letting things go that just burden us. And, you know, I mean, there's so many 
bad energies in this world, whether it's self-induced or work-induced or bill-induced or responsibility-induced. And it's just nice to get some tools to work with that help us let some of that go or at least get through it and then let it go. Um, so we're going to try to do some of those things for this holiday season. And, um, again, you know, I'm looking forward to some really great Christmas ghost stories. We got Simon Entwistle coming back on all the way from, from Lancaster in the UK. And he's going to give us some good old English ghost stories for Christmas. And I'm looking great forward to that. I love Simon. He's become a dear friend. And um, I know you guys like him too. So that's what we're doing and some hope and, and other great ghost stories for the new year. So I hope you'll ring in the holidays here with me and Crispy. Also, don't forget tpublic.com. Everything is on sale right now, I believe. Everything is 30% off if you get in there and catch it. So t-shirts are like $14. They're really great artists in there. If you don't get some of mine, go in there and get some of the other artists. I know that our good friend uh, Sean Wick has uh, some in there uh, for his podcast, Next to the Fire, and all of his go to charity. So big shout out to, to, to Sean Wick. And I believe that charity is a prevention, uh, suicide prevention. So uh, he gets a little bit of that. When you buy a t-shirt, a little bit gets kicked back to the podcast. So... Um, that's a real nice way to a gift that you get for somebody else that actually goes to some, you know, a couple other people. That's great. It goes to a podcast and it goes to a really good charity for suicide prevention. And that's Sean Wicks next to the fire. So big shout out to him. Um, and ours is, um, tpublic.com slash user slash Cisco. The, uh, the link is down here in our show notes. So go on in there and, you know, Journey Through the Gate gets just a little bit of that. There's mugs and the cool travel mugs. I love the um, Journey Through the Gate logo with a little crispy on it. The black and red one on the travel mug looks fantastic. It looks great on the canvas notebooks. And the canvas bags, I have one myself. They are very good quality. Um, the ink isn't just sitting on top of it. It's actually into the canvas. It's great. You can get it one-sided or double. And who doesn't need bags now at the grocery store and stuff like that? There's three different sizes you can get. The stickers are good quality. I've got some. The t-shirts are really nice. I love them. And, uh, the hoodies. Now, what you might not notice is there's pullover hoodies with the logo on the front. If you click the arrow and look down... You can get the logo on the back with the zippered front, and there's two different weights. There's a lightweight and there's a heavyweight um, hoodie, and there's baseball tees, and there's so much other stuff in there, pillows and mugs and all kinds of stuff. So please go in there and look, and if uh, you get something, take a picture of it. We'll put it up on the gatekeepers on our Facebook page. So there's a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do. Um, and if all you're doing is listening, we appreciate you. I love each and every one of you guys. Uh, don't forget we are on conflict radio on YouTube and now they're doing something really cool when they premiere our show. Um, I believe it's usually, uh, Mondays, Mondays or Tuesdays, depending when I upload, it will say, make sure you hit the notification button for conflict radio because it will say premiering live now. And you go in there, they'll have the live chat while they play the YouTube video. And it's been really fun. There's been a lot of people in there chatting and having a good time and talking about the guests and asking questions. And I try to get the guests to go in there and I try to be in there so we can answer those questions. And it's really, it's neat with something new that's happening and we're really digging it. The other, uh, we are also on uh, Swamp Gas um, we are on it's unknown spirit.com. So we're in uh, Swamp Gas Digital Radio, and we are on there Wednesday nights. And you can find that on unknown spirit.com. They, they've done a lot of overhauling on there, and Arizona Tramp's really done a lot of work on that. And it's got a beautiful uh, mobile friendly page as well. And there's so many great podcasts on there. I mean, you've got Jim Mallard from uh, the Mallard Report. Hi, Duck. Big shout out to Duck. We've got Cat Ward, uh, Paranormal Heart. 
Uh, we've got, um, oh gosh, there's so many podcasts on there. So if you like this genre and you like conspiracies, and you like cryptids, and you like ghosts, and you like all these other stuff in science, science fiction, that's there. It's there and on Conflict Radio on YouTube. So there you go. Have happy holidays and try to remember, guys, take care of yourself. Buy yourself a little something. Eat the chocolate. Drink the wine. Have a cold beer. You know, hug your pets. Tell the people that you love that you love them. Forgive the idiots because half the time they don't even know they're being idiots. Why, why, why commiserate over it? You know what I mean? Just let them go and you be you. You can't fix everybody. Work on yourself. It's all good, you know. And uh, this too shall pass. Just get through it and try to enjoy it. Listen to the birds sing. Decorate the tree. You know what I mean? Watch the sappy show. Sing the songs. Dance barefoot in your kitchen. Enjoy life. Okay? Enjoy it. I love you all. Happy holidays. And don't forget, keep your feet under the covers. Keep that closet door shut. Because there are things that go bump in the night.